Welcome to our live interview with Randy Schmidt, local teacher and best-selling author, here to discuss his new book, Dolly on Dolly, powered in part by Classic of Dim. Well, hey, everybody, we are coming at you live with the man, the myth, the legend, Randy Schmidt, uh, local teacher, educator, and best-selling author. Uh, super, super excited to have you in the studio. Uh, just to give you guys a little bit of context as to the impressive resume of our guest today. Uh, Randy is the author of the acclaimed best-selling biography, Little Girl Blue, The Life of Karen Carpenter, a New York Times, uh, New York Times Editor's Choice and Wall Street Journal bestseller, uh, which is super cool. Right. <laughs> uh, also the editor of Judy Garland on Judy Garland and Yesterday Once More, The Carpenter's Reader. Uh, you have written articles for The Advocate and The Observer, and you teach music in Denton, Texas, an extremely uh, big deal, I think, given such a right. music community that we have. So you've been teaching over at DISD, um, going to be on 15 years, been teaching music for over, golly, what, 20 years now? Yeah, 20 years um, now together. And teaching elementary, uh, elementary music currently at Atkins Elementary. So taking my hat off to you for the fact that you will educate children <laughs> <laughs> that would be that's enough my day to job that's my my real thing this other's a side gig that would be enough to impress me right there um but we also are talking about the fact that you have authored a new book dolly on dolly um can we just show it <laughs> yes please yes and I'm super, super, super excited about this book. Uh, it's you. been getting a lot of buzz and a lot of press, and I'm so honored that we got to have you on the radio today to get I'm to talk to a little here. bit about Thank it. And yeah, big time. Um, so walk us through uh, the journey. Where, where did Dolly on Dolly start? Um, Dolly on Dolly is a collection of interviews that she's given from 1967 up through to pretty much pr the present day. And so it's uh, five decades of articles and interviews that I have collected and present in, the, in this book. So there's everything from her 1978 Playboy interview um, through to several from Rolling Stone. And then things that were um, pretty obscure, things that maybe didn't get widespread distribution in the beginning. An underground Atlanta newspaper from 1971. Wow. Um, and... Um, several interviews that have never been in print before um, that I was able to find recordings for and things like that. But so this this kind of book is different work than writing a straightforward biography, you know, start yeah. to finish that could take eight or ten years, like Little Girl Blue, the the Karen Carpenter book. Um, this kind of book is more of a two year project, and it um, is something where I go out and seek reprint permissions and. Um, pull this all together and, and present it in a way that shows Dolly's evolution, kind of a pointillism cool. style biography. Yeah. Love it. Well, and we were all, we were talking before we got the interview started that you, you said something I thought was really, really cool. So that even the title Dolly on Dolly, it's almost like an autobiography right. because it's not necessarily your words. I mean, you're the one putting it together and comp compiling it and all of these kind of things and having to search all of this stuff down. Uh, but you're getting to use real materials from Dolly herself to show this narrative of Dolly. It's just super right. cool. And to show the, show the evolution of her in the press. I mean, to yeah. show her going from 21 years old, not even knowing Porter Wagner, who was the one who kind of introduced her to the rest of the world, but a 21 year old in a Nashville apartment doing an interview to now being one of the biggest superstars in the world. Love and it. so to watch her evolve from, from one to the next, and she knew she was going to be a star from the very beginning, and that was the thing. She just wanted to be a more radiant and a more yeah. bright star than she was the year before or whatever <laughs> it might be. Super, super cool. So, um, all right, so what did you learn about Dolly Parton from the research of this book? Was there something that you weren't aware of through this process that, that kind of was brought to life? Well, I, I think I was surprised by the fact that no matter how far back I went and dug, there was never a time when she wasn't the confident, driven, tenacious individual that she still is today. I kept thinking I would find a time when she was maybe less secure <laughs> or right. when she was, you know, not quite... Um, sure of what her future might be, but she always, from the very earliest interviews, talks about wanting to be a star and wanting to be a bigger star mm -hmm. and to do more and to, um, and I think that she's done that over the years. She always wants to do more and be more for people. And mm -hmm. uh, as evidenced recently by the 
the wildfires in East Tennessee. And she, she came forward and all these families that were, uh, that lost their homes, she gave them a thousand dollars each a month wow. for six months. And then she surprised them all at the end and gave them each $5,000 to get back on their feet. And so she's not just this incredible musical superstar. She's also a philanthropist and, um, she has a, a children's book charity called the Imagination Library. So she's done so much for so many people because her music, I mean, it's because of the music that she's able to do all of these other things. But I think that was a surprise that she, um, that there was never a time that she didn't know what she wanted for her life and for mm -hmm. her career. Wow. And the, the one shocker that's kind of fun uh, uh, that I didn't know before this is that Dolly Parton has tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> and and people, <laughs> people seem to find that funny. Um, <laughs> evidently, they're all hidden, but um, she started it because she had some scars from surgery, and she, hmm. she wanted to have these um, little pastel, delicate tattoos done on her torso to, um, to cover and decorate these scars that she had. And evidently, it's grown, and they are all connected now, and she has butterflies and angels and things like that. Um, cool. But that's, that's something that people don't know about Dolly, I think. <laughs> I love it. So what are some of the qualities you th could you, s you know qualities of Dolly just as a person that have helped translate into making her this this mega star right. that's really separated her from the rest of the crowd? Well, I think her look and her image is one thing. I mean, mm. there she's she can't be confused with anybody else, obviously. True, very true. And that was kind of a mission early on too that she wanted an image that would sell the music. Mm. And but then she wanted to be f able to fall back on there is really talent underneath yeah. this. And um, so I think that that is a lot of what connected people to her is they saw this, this larger than life image. But then when you started looking at her a little more closely, you see that she's really down to earth and has this self-deprecating, you know, <laughs> sense of humor where she makes fun of herself quite often and is just really relatable. And I think mm -hmm. for me as a kid, when I fell in love with Dolly's music, um, you know, she w she had this TV TV series in the late 1970s, and she would come down on a swing at the beginning of it, and they would introduce, ladies and gentlemen, Dolly Parton. She'd step off the swing and look right into the camera and sing and talk. And I was, you know, like a two or three year old kid and didn't even really understand what was going on here. Right. But there's this nice lady with with big hair <laughs> and sparkles, you know, everywhere that's that's talking to me. And yeah, um, so she was. It was her storytelling, mm -hmm. either through her music or through her words, that that kind of drew me in from the beginning. So I think that makes sense as to why I would want to do this and yeah. explore that part of her even more. Very, very cool. Well, as someone that spends a lot of time working in music and uh, working with a bunch of local musicians and, and folks like that, um, the pattern that I see a lot with uh, with musicians that are just starting, or really even musicians who have been in this game for a really long time, mm -hmm. is that they want to sell the music first and then we worry about <laughs> image and all of these other things because um, they don't want to cheapen the music. Right. So what you're saying is Dolly had this reverse effect in that she wasn't cheapening or taking away from the music or anything at all, but she had an understanding that she needed to sell Dolly the image and the person, right. and then she could sell the music. Well, and she she did that in an over-the-top way so that people would say, have you seen this woman? You know, yeah. have you seen this woman with the wigs? And, you know, <laughs> and so it, it worked for her completely. And so it kind of became an extension of her, but she talks in some of the interviews that are here in the book where she's talking about Dolly as almost like a character. Mm, like, okay. like, think of like Elvira or yeah. Pee Wee Herman, where it's kind of an extension of the real person. Yeah. And um, she talks about, you know, what am I, what is she going to say this time? Yeah. Or how would, how would Dolly do this? Or how would Dolly do that? And what's she going to say this year to shock people? Or, or you know, what's she yeah. going to wear this year that she didn't wear last year? Hmm. And so it was kind of a, a masterminded character yeah. that she, uh, not that it's not her, right. but, but she went into it with the intention of, you know, being this character that people could identify and yeah. Like I said, there's nobody else like her. <laughs> no kidding. Well, through this process of, of learning Dolly and, and building um, this this image and all that, did she ever struggle with that? Did she ever question the image? Did she ever say, you know, did I turn the wrong <laughs> direction and I should have done this or I should have right. done that? Or or was it something that she was just she was just self aware? She just understood the show. 
I think overall she was self-aware, and there were a lot of people that told her, especially when she started breaking off from country music and, and exploring the pop music world in the late 70s, they said, you'll never make it. Mm. And why are you abandoning country music and that sort of thing? And she said many times, I'm not leaving country music, I'm taking it with me. Mm. And so she introduced all these other genres that she ended up getting into and the, the movie uh, movies that she made, 9 to 5, uh, Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, Steel Magnolias, things like yeah. that. All of those people were introduced to her in different ways, but it all seems to come back to the music. So um, I think that she she was pretty much aware, not that she didn't have setbacks. I mean, she definitely did along the way, had, had quite a few struggles. And she was, um, you know, a powerful woman in definitely a man's business at that time. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorite quotes, she talks about, you know, they, th they think that I'm this dumb blonde and then I walk in and, um, and that they think that, that I'm going to, you know, just do whatever they want. And then pretty soon, you know, I've got the money and I'm gone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the exact quote, but yeah. she, she basically talks about her business smarts and that she, mm. she looks like a woman, but she says she thinks like a man in mm. the terms of the business world, especially in the seventies the and eighties. Right. That was, uh, I think a uphill climb for most people, but for her, it somehow just worked beautifully. Yeah. Very, very cool. Well, was there ever a, uh, an, an authenticity struggle or, you know, she's having to wear all these different hats and she's got to be charming on stage, but she's got to be the business <laughs> person <laughs> off stage and all the, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, was there, um, w w how much of the, how much of Dolly was act versus just who she really was? Well, I think it, she created a brand, mm -hmm. so to speak, and she surrounded herself with people that would advise her well and, um, if they, if she didn't feel that they had her best interests at heart, she would send them on their way and find <laughs> somebody who was going to support whatever dream she had at that time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it always with her starts with a dream and then she builds from there. And one, um, as she said, has said in several places, it's like a tree, you know, it, you know, that takes root and then you've got all these different branches. And I think she had people on all of the, and s continues to this day to have people on those branches that take care of a lot of these, these things for her mm. and help her to make the right decisions in some, in some cases. So um, she's always surrounded herself, I think, with the right people. Very cool. So, so man, I could go on about <laughs> questions about Dolly Parton all day because I think okay. she's, she's truly one of the most fascinating uh, celebrities in, right. in all of entertainment to me because because you're right, she had she's this very generous, uh, very um, I don't know if authentic is the word I'm looking for, but I mean she she touches you. I mean she right. really does. Absolutely. But at the same time, she really knew how to how to how to treat this like a business. Absolutely, you know? yeah. She very very fascinating character. Well even when you see her in concert, I mean it's the same show every night, and a lot of times the same rehearsed lines or stories, mm -hmm. but somehow she makes everybody feel like they're seeing and hearing it all for the first time. Yeah. And like you know you're in her living room and she's just asking you to pull up a yeah. chair and let's sit around the fireplace and tell stories. She has that that appeal to to so many people. That's I think. very cool. Well, there's I I, th I think a lot of the time uh, young musicians. Uh, they they don't want to do the same thing twice. Mm -hmm. they, they want it to be something new every time. <laughs> and I'm I'm a big believer in if I find something that works, I will wear it out until it is dead. Right. <laughs> well, it's interesting with her. Like she she does that. I mean, she she knows that she's got to sing Jolene every night. Right. But then she also finds ways to to you know get on board with other acts and things along the way. So I mean, performing at different uh, music awards with Katy Perry. Or um, re-recording Jolene with Pentatonix. Yeah. And then um, there's been some uh, headlines recently that she's going to have a duet with um, Kesha on her new, new album. Oh, so that's cool. <laughs> she, she says yes to a lot of these projects, I think, because she knows it introduces her to a new audience. Yeah. And, and people that might have never heard of her go, who's this? And then they dig deeper and find out yeah. more about her. Very smart in that way, I think. Really, really cool. So would you suggest this as um, – obviously, I think um, – I don't want to necessarily say history buffs because Dolly's still alive, but <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of history in in Dolly's life right. and and the evolution there. So I think history buffs would enjoy this. I think country music fans would enjoy this. But I think 
young artists or people just trying to to learn a little more about the game would love getting their hands on this but that's the most exciting part for me yeah. is because I would love to be able to give this uh, you know a copy of this to a lot of young musicians to say hey here's somebody that that been there did that and got that t-shirt and <laughs> what <laughs> lessons could you pull from this absolutely um Okay, anyway, so not to, to camp out on Dolly too terribly long, but you uh, this is not your first book. Um, tell us a little bit about some of the other projects that you've done. My first book, as you mentioned earlier, was Little Girl Blue, The Life of Karen Carpenter, and I really thought that would be my only book. That I had one book in me, <laughs> and um, I'd been a Carpenters fan since I was a teenager, and uh, didn't unfortunately didn't get to experience the Carpenters music firsthand too much um, since Karen Carpenter died in 1983. And um, anyway, that book was something that was in the works off and on for about eight to ten years. And um, when I was in college, I kind of became the Internet Carpenters guru. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and so people would send me things and or come to me and say, hey, do you have this article or do you have this interview? And so it kind of evolved from that. I didn't really consider myself a writer. I loved writing in school and as, as I was growing up and stuff. But. I thought to be an author of a book, you had to be an author of a book. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah you right, don't yeah. think about I, I tell my students this today, you know, anybody can be an author. You can do any occupation and you can still love to write right. and, and make that happen. And um, so I kept waiting for somebody to write the book about Karen Carpenter that I wanted to read. Right. And it wasn't happening. So <laughs> I, I, I had the opportunity to interview some of her childhood friends and that's kind of what kicked it off. Wow. And um, so I had all these taped interviews just on the shelf for a number of years and kept thinking, you know, what am I going to do with these? And people would ask me questions and I would sometimes say, oh, well, you know, I'd give them an answer and they'd say, how do you know that? Well, it's this interview that I did, you know, cool. four or five years ago. It's on the shelf in there, but really important information that people didn't know. So that's when I started, you know, really going to work on this, this Karen Carpenter biography. And um, it actually went back for a second printing before it even came out. The The initial orders for the book um, were so great that they wow. got to go back and do a That's second great. printing before That's it awesome. even was officially <laughs> released. So just a couple of weeks into that book being out, and it was getting press from like People Magazine, and I did interviews for Inter Entertainment Tonight and Inside Edition and a bunch of different things. It was like a whirlwind. And Sometime in that time, my editor from um, Chicago Review Press, which did that book, said, so what's your next book? And I was like, oh, that that's it. Yeah. <laughs> and then I started thinking how many people, you know, would just, you know, die to be able to say, oh, my gosh, they want right. another book from me. And so I, I started kind of looking for ideas. And it was around that time that I discovered this series of books that was already in place at Chicago Review Press. Um, which is a kind of a larger of the independent book publishers. They they do a really nice job of I think having you know putting TLC into a book where people and I could call and they'd know who I am right, right. and know the book. Uh, but they also get you into Barnes and Noble and they get you know they get good publicity and they get you places that you need to that a lot of I think independent pu publishers wouldn't necessarily be able to do. Anyway, um, <laughs> the musicians in their own words series kind of revealed itself to me and there was. Um, Hendrix on Hendrix and Coltrane on Coltrane, Springsteen on Springsteen. And it was all these uh, rock and jazz um, greats who had been explored in this in this way. And um, I started thinking, you know, who could I do? Who who means enough to me to keep me coming back to the subject? That's that's kind of right. the thing. I'm not good at being say somebody coming and saying, here, write about this. Yeah. But if it's something I'm passionate enough about that keeps me coming back again and again, and both Judy and Dolly were people from my childhood that I've just cool. loved forever. So I knew that they would keep me coming back. And especially after I started digging in and finding out what materials out there. And um, that's when I proposed the Judy Garland book to them. And they were kind of like, okay, you know, she's not jazz. She's not rock. Right. She's kind of genre less. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, you can't really pigeonhole her into any one category. Yeah. Um, and so that book came along and, um, Actually, it d did quite well. It Judy's daughter, Lorna Luff, gave us a, a endorsement for the back cover of the, the oh, paperback later cool. on. and um, So things like that have, have made that a really special book. And got to meet uh, her son, Joe Luft, and do some work on a, a book that his father had had, um, a memoir that Judy's third husband had done. I got to do some the, the foreword for that. And uh, it was an unfinished biography, so I got to, or autobiography, so I got to, finish the book for him oh, in his words cool. using 
um, interviews and things like that. Um, but then after the Judy book came out, I thought, who's next? And I kind of yeah. keep going back. You know, Karen was first, then go back further in my history, then there's Judy, and go back to when I was just a little kid, you know, two years old, falling in love with Dolly Parton. <laughs> Very cool. And so that's where, um, that's where this book came from. And um, it was funny because I remember when I first kind of pitched it just informally to the editor, he said, you know, well, country books don't usually sell as well for us. And I had to really get him to ask around the <laughs> office and everything. She's not just a country right, singer, right, you know. Right. This is she's in kind of in the way that um, that Judy is genreless. Right. I mean, she's been in every part of the business. She's done country and she's done pop, and she's done you know like really back to her roots, country, bluegrass, and things like yeah. that. And then she's been a movie star and a theme park owner and all these these things. She's way more than just a country singer. So. Yeah. I had to kind of plead my case in that way, and um, I think they're glad they did it. They've gone Good. back now to a second printing with this one, which is pretty exciting. That's great. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So you, this this is part of a much larger series if people wanted to, to find yeah. more of these Dolly on Dolly or, or Judy Garland on Judy Garland. Or, uh, I think or there's a Lennon on Lennon that's coming out. Uh, these aren't all my books, obviously. Yeah. Different authors um, contribute super to this cool. series. and so Super, super cool. Yeah. Love it. Okay, so if we have any young, uh, or not even, y just aspiring writers mm -hmm. out there, and they got the chance to ask you for one piece of advice, how do I go from turning this into a hobby or a passion to actually going off and getting this book published? Right. What What would that advice be? Well, I think getting started writing, uh, I, I loved writing as a kid, and I was the one that everybody looked at like, what? You're excited about this term paper? <laughs> or you, know, you, you want to do this re research project? Um, I think what's important is to do the, the legwork of this. Don't just go online and, and do a search and right. you know, piece stuff together. But get into libraries and explore you know, special collections at different libraries. Retro. <laughs> definitely. It, it's totally a retro thing. I'd love to go and you know, sit in the basement of a library and dig through boxes cool. of stuff you know, and find something that nobody's you know, seen for 30 years or whatever. Yeah. And so uh, do the work in that way I think is really important. And, and you know, I do nonfiction work only so i'm not I, not the right person to tell somebody how to go off and write a novel sure but um the research part has been what's done it for me and i remember asking another author you know if you're not the expert on this certain person then how do you do the book right. and he explained to me that if you do the work if you do the legwork you become the expert mm. and so while i say you know i'm not an expert on judy garland or on dolly parton i'm an enthusiast yeah but i i do feel like i've kind of in this work become an expert on her interviews cool. and on you know you know that that yeah, side of things yeah. so i don't know everything about her life and i mean i, I wouldn't win the dolly parton trivia contest <laughs> with a bunch I of other <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but um so I, I think that's that's a lot of it and then just keeping after it like sending finding a, a good book proposal that putting it all together there are a lot speaking of the internet do go on the internet for <laughs> things like sample book proposals you know that yeah. what are the ingredients of a, of a book proposal and so you're going to want to talk to them about your audience and your wh what you'll do as an author is, is a pretty big deal you know yeah. saying how you'll promote it and not what will you do for me as a publisher, but saying, this is how I will go out and promote. Mm -hmm. You know, I will go and speak at these different places or I will go and do um, presentations at, you know, conventions or whatever it might or be. Or radio interviews. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, it's stuff like that. I think that my publisher has appreciated that I've gone out and kind of gone that extra mile yeah. to, to help promote the book and not just sit around and wait for them to call me and yeah. say, what are you going to do? But um, lots of... Um, pitching things like that to, to different people and not giving up. I, mm -hmm. I kind of lucked out with the Karen Carpenter book because I sent out three proposals and I, from that I got two responses and two offers. Wow. That's <laughs> awesome. So <laughs> I was expecting, you know, the stack of yeah, rejection yeah, letters of that everybody talks about. And now since then I've had my share of rejection sure. letters, but I kind of lucked out the first time. And That's cool. if you can get that first book though, it does give you some clout to go on. You know, mm -hmm. the fact that I can say, a New York Times Editor's Choice and a Wall Street Journal yeah. bestseller and give them numbers of, you know, how many you've sold and things like that gives you a, a you know, a, a definitely a foot in the door to the next project, if That's that makes sense. That's super cool. Yeah, no, 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 it is. Do you feel like it's that they are similar to, right back to Dolly, mm -hmm. do you feel like the publisher is not just buying the book, they're also buying you? 
<laughs> as far as like about what you will do in the promotion of the book and you know and all of those. Kind I of think things. in some ways, yeah, because they they want somebody who n- is not necessarily an expert, but somebody who can be an authority or who can go out and and command yeah. uh, an audience in a way and 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 sell the book in that way. You know, I'm not a salesperson at all. Sure. If if people come tonight and want to get the book because they know that I'm here, whatever, that's great. But I'm not the type to be like, hey, you know, yeah. this, <laughs> I'm not a salesman style. If, buy the book. <laughs> if I put myself in the right places, the book mm. is going to sell. And cool. if I if I share it in a way and show my passion for the the subject, that hopefully that will you know will connect with other people. Very very cool. Well, Randy, I could chat with you all night because I think the book is super cool. I think you, it's obvious the work that you've put into it. Uh, I know you're not supposed to judge books by the by the cover, <laughs> it but it's a, a gorgeous cover. cover. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> and uh, anyways, tonight, right here in the Discovered It and Welcome Center, 111 West Hickory Street, we will be having trivia night competing against Ran- – I'm kidding. <laughs> but, <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> but I better no, get we, to reading. <laughs> we, <laughs> we will be doing a book signing tonight. From 7 to 9, right here in the Discovered It and Welcome Center. Uh, do not miss it. If you've never been to the Discovered It and Welcome Center, we're right on the square at 111 West Hickory Street. If you can find LSA Burger, we're right next door to them, just across from the courthouse. We want you guys to get to meet Randy, get your copy of the book, do all that great stuff. We've got music happening tonight and all sorts of other cool things. So come on down, check out the book, check out Randy, check out the Welcome Center, find out a little bit about Denton. And uh, it should be a really, really, really great night. Randy, thank you so much thank for you. coming. We really appreciate it. Where are, if somebody's not able to physically come here and get the book tonight, which they should, because who knows, <laughs> they could just, they could all be gone tonight. They got to come tonight. That'd be nice. But, <laughs> but if they're not able to come tonight, where else can they find it? Um, my website is randylschmidt.com. Okay. And then Chicago Review Press is the publisher. Um, you can find it at some Barnes and Noble brick and mortar stores, but for sure on their, their website and, um, amazon.com. I mean, it, just, just search it and you'll, cool. you'll be able to find it and need to come down tonight. Uh, we've got a, a life-size Dolly stand up that you can get your, your picture taken with tonight. <laughs> so it's going to be Super fun. Super cool. Well, I am really, really looking forward to this book signing and getting to meet all the folks, the, the, all the Dolly enthusiasts and everybody. I just think Dolly enthusiasts are some of the funnest people. Uh, anybody that likes yeah. Dolly is a friend of mine. So <laughs> anyways, tonight, seven o'clock, Discovered it in Welcome Center. Can't say it enough. 111 West Hickory Street. Come on down. Meet Randy. Get your copy of the book. He will be signing them this evening. Uh, so don't miss it. Randy, thank you again very thank much you. for coming it's and doing this. Great to meet this. you. And we really, really appreciate fun to do it. this. Good, 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 good. All right, everybody. The book is Dolly on Dolly. Make sure you get your copy today. And we will see you guys well, in a couple of hours where we will be broadcasting Song and Story right here again on Denton Radio. Well, thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the show. Be sure to check out DentonRadio.com for new Denton artists and where they're playing next. While you're surfing the Internet, make sure you check out our friends Classic of Denton at ClassicofDenton.com. <laughs>